right, thank you everyone for, uh, for joining us here today. Of course, I want to thank Mark, as usual, for the spectacular job and his staff that they do at organizing these events. I've been to many of them, but I would tell you that this is probably one of the best and certainly the one that facilitates the sort of uh, intimate dialogue. Um, by way of background, um, my name is Gordon Winston. I hope you're enjoying the, the food. Don't eat too much. The drink menu is not uh, accessible to all, but only to some, and we'll leave it to Mark to decide who that is. Um, so in short, uh, I'm Gordon Winston. Uh, I have a, a, a legacy in, in the Winston uh, jewelry business. I don't talk about it often because I have other accomplishments in my own life that, uh, that precede that. Uh, for the most part, I was, a, I was an investment banker uh, at Lehman Kidder and, and Bear Stearns. I worked through a lot of interesting uh, esoteric assets. And um, a, a number of, of, of years ago, after, after getting involved in the, in the life sciences space through a corporate finance group based in Hamilton, Bermuda, decided that we were going to set up a, a family office. Uh, my father-in-law uh, uh, owned a, a Canadian uh, retail business called Future Shop, which he started in 1989 and grew that business to roughly a, a billion and a half U.S. dollars of sales. Uh, he had over 100 stores, and at, uh, at one point, he decided that uh, rather than competing against Best Buy, what he was going to do is he was going to sell that business. So, sold the business, realized about uh, six or seven hundred million dollars of, in, in, of in, in doing that and then set out uh, giving me and a couple of other people the task of finding a home for that. I was just explaining to, to, the, to the table that whilst you have five or six hundred million dollars to invest, it's not as easy as you think. So we went about, solicited to most of the investment banks looking for homes to put capital to work, and at the end of the day, writing someone a check for 50 to 75 million dollars with no co-investment rights or any other insight into what they were doing wasn't something that we, we chose to do. So with that, um, with that the, 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 of course, the, the mandate was set even higher, and the question was, what are we going to do with the money? In a kind of serendipitous way, uh, we got a phone call from uh, Rothschild Bank. There was a Canadian company called Drug Royalty Corporation, which had been put in play by a UK company called Cambridge Antibodies. Anyone in the life sciences space or anyone based out of the UK would know the name of that entity because they had one of the most formidable monoclonal antibody platforms in the planet, and from that, drugs like Umira, Enbrel, and many others were evolved. Um, but anyway, the, this small little dinky Canadian company, as things typically are in, in the Canadian stock exchange. The, the, oh, that's okay. I'm, I'm, I, too, am a Canadian. I hold a Canadian passport. So, um, oh, yeah, all right, shout out to the other Canadian. But in typical fashion, but in typical fashion, the, the company limped along for a number of years, but they did something interesting is that they, they identified some off-balance sheet assets that were tied to intellectual property. And thus the quest of identifying other sorts of off-balance sheet assets in this form. I would tell you that we became, we, we actually we spent $100 million, we decided that we are gonna take the company private. Uh, we spent $100 million to, to do it. Uh, we basically put, we put our kishkis on the line and decided that this made sense to do. I won't walk you through all the details, but if you're interested, I'll, I'll, I'll give those to you. But basically, it was, uh, it was a, a whirlwind. Uh, we basically started using uh, our own capital. Uh, we ultimately would invest several hundred million dollars of our own money. We needed incremental capital. We brought in Goldman Sachs. We brought in other investors and, and basically launched a first-time fund, which was $760 million. And from that, uh, we then led... IP securitizations, we had securitizations wrapped by the rating agencies. We're talking about this, doing this back in 2006 and 2007, before anyone understood the value of an intangible was really something that, that was incredible. And ultimately, you know, we would, we, would, we would compete against guys like Royalty Pharma in building out this, this space. And I have a whole other realm of history on this in particular. The reason why I give you this background is that um, I moved from just looking at monetization of intellectual property to looking at uh, intellectual property more broadly as, as an asset class, setting aside the diamonds and the gems and all the other stuff that we were talking about as well. Uh, and the, the reality is that we... Um, okay, <laughs> short of it. Here we go. We're now invested. We've now actually started investing in Europe. And emerging, and emerging countries such as, I mean, I don't want to call them emerging countries, but uh, Finland, Stockholm, Sweden, 
and using royalty finance as a step stone into the capital structure of these businesses. So basically, they mostly have three to seven years of operating history. They all have 85, 90% margins. We use this form of basically royalty monetization as a step stone and opportunistically invest equity in them. We've got 25 companies right now. Uh, we've got a couple of unicorns already in our portfolio, and we're out in the market raising 125 million euro, which we will put out uh, in nine to 12 months and then raise a five or $600 million fund. Ta -da. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. So everyone, please raise your glass to Mark. <laughs> But seriously, raise, raise, I would actually raise a glass to everyone here for actually really, this year has been a pretty difficult year, and unfortunately it is one, but we are here together. So cheers to all. Thank you for your time and good wishes. Thank you.